Just recently I posted on my Facebook page this image of three in-progress turnings. I stated that I was going to be putting a CA finish on the dyed area and then would be gold leafing the inside of the bowl. A friend of mine said, Steve, you need to do a video showing us how you do the CA finish. So that's what this video is. It's my first attempt at it. So hope you learned something and enjoy. Thank you. Hi, this is the uh, one of the turnings that I posted yesterday on Facebook. This is the one that's been dyed red. I started out with, um, I use uh, chestnut spirit stain. I learned about it from Jimmy Clues. Uh, I dyed it black at first uh, and then sanded it back to help accentuate uh, the grain in here. This is a piece of uh, quilted maple, uh, big leaf maple that I got from uh, Northwoods out of Oregon. Uh, they do a good job uh, supplying me with some of my wood. Uh, after I sanded it back, I then dyed it red and let it set overnight. Uh, what I'm going to do now is burnish it. And the reason I burnish it is to kind of harden the surface of the uh, dye so that when I do put my CA on, I don't lose a lot of it. Even with it being burnished, uh, as you'll see later on, some of the dye does come off. And I could have probably burnished it yesterday, but I didn't. So. I'll crank up the speed here. I use just this, it's a Scott soft paper towel. And you can see there a little bit of the uh, dye has come off. I'll get my uh, CA supplies and uh, shut this off for just a minute, get my supplies and come right back. Okay, I'm back. I've uh, taken my Scott paper towel, folded it in quarter uh, lengthwise. I'm using medium CA, and uh, I'll put it on pretty heavy. I'll put between 20 and 25 coats on here. And the reason I put so many on there is because uh, when I sand it back, I want to make sure I have enough uh, thickness in that coat that I don't sand into the dye or go through the, the CA at all. Um, it's similar to what you do when you're using CA on a pin, except you don't quite get it as smooth. Uh, I've got it, when I crank it up, it'll probably be uh, going about uh, 275 RPM, something like that. And so uh, I'll come along and show you what I do. I won't bore you with 25 coats. I'll put on a couple coats so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, once I get those coats on there and dried, uh, then I'll come back, show you my first sanding on it uh, to get it smooth and level, and then I'll add some more coats uh, as well. So I just take it, kind of drizzle it on here. You can see as it comes on how it is creating a, the, the film on there. Now it, it, dry, it takes a little bit for it to dry. This first coat usually goes pretty fast. I do not use uh, accelerator when I'm doing this on the bowl simply because I don't want to take a chance on having like bubble up or, or whatever. When I do my pins I do use accelerator once in a while. And so what I'll do here is cut that piece off Check it. It's just about dry, not quite. Ooh, forgot to turn my fan on. When you're using CA, make sure you've got a fan or something blowing the fumes in the opposite direction from where you are because you don't want to inhale them. They're pretty potent. And then I've also got an exhaust fan up here to help vent it to the outside. Okay, I'll go ahead and put another coat on here. Uh, you can see how I do this. I just kind of glob it on. Get a nice thick coat on there. Try to get it fairly smooth. It's not going to be perfectly smooth. But the smoother you can get it, the less you have, the easier it will be to sand down the road. 
and you can tell I get a little glue on the inside there. I'm not too worried about that. I'll come back and sand that out. Uh, also, I'm going to be gold leafing it in there so it doesn't have to be completely free of uh, any CA. You can see that it's starting to uh, shape up pretty well. Wipe off some of the CA around the edge here. Uh, and I think it's going to it's really going to look good once it gets all glossed up. You get your coats on there and finished up. So I'll stop at this point, put my other coats on there, and then come back uh, with my sanding on it. Thanks. I'm still working on putting on my 20, 25 coats of CA. I've had to change from the blue shop, uh, Scott shop towel, to this brawny industrial uh, white towel. It's one I found my brother-in-law gave me. He uses it when he uh, does a lot of spray painting on the tractors and everything that he does. Uh, it doesn't produce as much lint. What happens with the Scott sometimes is it will become so saturated that it will start pulling apart on the turning. And then you've got to go back, let that dry, sand it back to get rid of all that uh, fiber that's on there and it's just a real hassle. So I'm trying this and so far so good. I'll keep you posted. Well, I finally have my 25 coats on and now I'm going to sand. What I want to do is, since this is such an, uh, got a lot of grooves in it, it's not completely flat, I want to sand it to where it is completely flat. I don't want to sand it too heavily because I don't want to go through the layers of uh, CA. But what I do want to do is I'll start out with 240 grit, then go 300 and 400 grit. Uh, once I get the 400 grit done and get it wiped off, then I'll come back and put on about 10 or 15 more coats of thin CA just to get it good and smooth and level, come back, sand it once again, and then I'll micromesh it. So here we go. You can see you can see how unlevel that is just by the difference in the color of the sanding areas. So I'll I'll sand it until it's all one color. You can see it's starting to get a flat surface on there. I won't bore you. It's kind of like watching paint dry. So I'll shut the camera off. I'll do my sanding and then I'll come back. Okay, while I was sanding, I used my dust collector to catch up a bunch of the fine dust that was in there so I wouldn't be breathing it. Um, going to wipe it off here. You can still see that I have one spot right here that I didn't get completely sanded smooth. And what I wanted to do is I would rather leave that one like that, come back with my final coats of CA, level that all out, and then come back to get it because I don't want to take the chance of sanding through and sanding down into the wood. This, that's an area right there along the rim that's real easy to sand through because what happens is you're bringing your sanding over, it wants to have a tendency to round over that corner and so you will sand that over a little bit. Now on this edge right here, I, I went ahead and sanded it so that it would stay flat. When I finish it up, I will take a black magic marker or a, a sharpie and come along and make this entire rim black. It just frames it out really nice that way. And that's something that I learned from Jimmy Clues. So at this point, I'll come back, start putting on some thin CA to 
as my final coat. You can also see here I've got a little bit that's uh, out of, that wasn't flattened. A few spots in here, but it, overall it's pretty good shape. I like the way it looks. I'm pleased with it. Hopefully it'll turn out to be a nice, nice finish once we're done. Okay, I have my C, thin CA here. I'm going to come along and I'll put about 10, maybe 15 coats on here, depending on what it looks like as we go along. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. And what I do, and hopefully you can see it better from this angle, I just put the nozzle down here and let the CA drip onto the towel and then just slowly bring it across and then smooth it out with this as we go through here. You can see how it really builds up that finish and you get a nice reflection off the the wood which creates that beautiful chatoyance in there. It's just really really nice. So I'll go ahead and put more coats on and once I get those finished we can come back and take the next step. Well I'm back. While I had the camera off I did quite a bit. I put on 12 coats of uh, thin CA, took my power sander, uh, sanded with started at 240, went 240, 320, 400 and then I got my micro mesh out uh, and I've gone through nine or eight of the nine levels of the micro mesh wet sanding it. Uh, before I go on any further, a couple things I do want to say. Um, this is just one process. There are a lot of different ways that you can put CA on a bowl. I know, I guess it's been about four years ago I went to SWAT. Alan Trout was there. He had a little bit different method. He used the uh, acetone to help smooth his out. I tried it. It didn't work for me. So just because I use 25 coats of the medium CA sanded, then use 10 coats or 12 coats of the thin CA, doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Try whatever you like. Find out what works best for you. And that's what the finishing process is all about. What works best for you. I do want to say also on the sanding, when you're sanding this back, you want to get rid of any gloss that might be on there because that gloss means it's a low spot. And so as you're sanding it, you, you want a nice flat finish. After you sand it, you can wipe the dust off and that's when you can really see if there's any glossy spots left. If there are, then go back and try and sand that out a little bit so that you don't have those glossy spots because if you finish it and you have irregularities in your surface, they're going to stand out like a sore thumb. As soon as that light hits it, somebody's going to see that and know that it's not, not a smooth level for finish. So that's why that's sanding and that's why I put so many coats on so that if I do have that, I don't have to worry about going down into the finish because there's nothing worse than either going down to the finish or sanding through the stain because then you've got to basically almost have to sand it all off and start all over. It's a, it's a real hassle and a real challenge. Okay, so I, I have here my last level of, C, of uh, micro mesh that I'll turn on and I'll, I'll just go through it so you can see what it looks like if you've never used micro mesh. You, you get a fine powder there and first time I started using micro mesh I dry sanded on my pins and I, I found that the wet sanding works a lot better. You get a, a much higher gloss and you don't have the scratches that you do that you uh, do with the dry sanding. So it's, it's just about there. And you can see the difference in the, the gloss of the, how the, the finish is a high gloss finish on here. You can see how it, it has a nice high level of gloss on here. What's really nice about the CA finish is that it will last forever. I've got a pin that I turned about four or five years ago. It has a CA finish on it. 
the metal on the pin, the finish is wearing off, but the CA finish on the wood, you'd never know that it was a, a day old. It's, it's that durable. What I'm going to do now is I have some um, turtle wax polishing compound and then some rubbing compound. And I'm going to start with the rubbing compound on there just simply because what I want to do is I want to make sure that if there are any fine scratches in the finish that I get rid of that. So I'll wet this a little bit, bring it out, and then I'll put my rubbing compound on here and then I'll rub it in. And I also, while we were separated, while I was, wasn't recording, I went through and used my negative rake, rake, safe, rake, negative rake scraper, got rid of all the CA that was on the inside and also re-sanded it so that it's ready to go when I get my supplies for my gold leafing. Put a little bit more on here. Now, on this, what you want to do is have it pretty low so that it doesn't fling around all over the place and just continue to rub it in because what you're trying to do is buff out any scratches that might be in there, any fine scratches. Some people will use um, a plastic polish. I know the automotive stores have it where it's that same plastic polish that they use for clearing up the headlights. That would work great as well. Okay, I think that's probably pretty much got that there. Okay, now I'll come along. You can see it's getting a nice shine to it. Scratches are always the hardest thing to get out of here. These little, not even, they're smaller than hairline. They're just really, really fine polishing scratches that are hard to get rid of. Okay, now I'll try some polish here. And again, like I was saying, just because I use turtle wax doesn't mean that's what you have to use. There's a lot of good polishes out there that will work on this and just go from there. Use what's either available or what you're comfortable with. Well, one of the things that happens when you've never done this recording stuff before is you run out of room on your uh, your disk. So that's what happened. I used up too much memory, forgot to delete some of it. So what I was finishing up there ended up not being recorded. But let me tell you a little bit more about the finishing process. I did wax this, and I still had some, you know hairline cracks in there and so I thought okay I'll use my Beal buffing system and what I went up, did is I put on my Tripoli buffed it out and then used white diamond and that got rid of all my fine scratches so instead of using all that polish and stuff I think I'm just gonna go with the Beal buffing system after I do my what's my micro mesh sanding and everything like that so hopefully that will give you an additional idea some tips in how to how to put a CA finish on a dyed bowl. So, hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless.